I'm going to be very unpopular. Thank God we can't go too far. I might have to go back into lockdown. <laughs> the bad news is they're all from Waterford. OTB AM's Mount Rushmore, live every weekday at 7.30 a.m. on OTB Sports Radio. Time for County Armagh. Adrian Barry, this uh, has been quite the saga we've been on, quite the journey where we've learned a lot about <laughs> counties. Uh, I think we're going to learn a bit more this morning when it comes to Armagh. Quite the saga, Owen. You're, you're into it. Oh, uh, without question. What, what are we looking at here? What, who are the big contenders? If you had to give your very uneducated take on who will be up in the mountain, who's it going to be? Well, look, that's, that's what it is, as always. The, it's funny with all of these counties, I, every time it comes up, you obviously the names flash into your head, and like the GA ones are the main ones, obviously, from a, an Armagh point of view that you'd be thinking about. Um, there's a few a few names that you wouldn't necessarily have associated with Armagh as maybe one of the main surprises out of all this thing. Um uh, Rory Best being one of them, like um, you know, it, it, we we do tend to think about it in very GA terms, and you know, Steve McDonald, Kieran McGinley, um, like Joe Kernan, given everything that he's done there, like there are names that definitely uh, trip off the tongue. Rosie McConville, like this, uh, I mean, how many? You know, got, got a photo of that 2002 team up on screen Incredible. at the moment. Like it's take your pickings from it, but it's also a situation like, where, like. It's it's one All Ireland, but it seems that they're on par with the Tyrone team in terms of the legends that you could pick from it. Despite the fact that Tyrone obviously have three All Irelands, and it's going to be very interesting to see who they actually go for. We'll probably need a bit of inside knowledge as to who is the biggest legend from that. Is it Geezer? Is it Kernan? Is it McConville? Like we mm. actually don't know. Like again, my very uneducated ta uh, take on this would be uh, McGinney is the one. Like we're going to have Aaron Kernan with us in just a moment, who should be able... I'm not sure if he's the best person or the worst person place to give us the correct take on Joe Kernan here, but th these guys are, are all heroes. These guys are, like, in a county sense, have to be right up there and right in contention. It's just a question of how many GEA people you have, because as you say, you've got Rory Best, you've got Neil Lennon. It's, it's quite a collection mm. of people. Yeah, the transcendent nature, I think, is always a, was definitely a, a factor for me, like in all of these, like what's the, how, how much beyond the sport did they cut through? And I suppose Kieran McGinney is certainly one of those names that probably a lot of people who um, maybe don't know a huge amount about sport or about GEA would always probably have some sort yeah. of recognition for it. But, um, and also what's, like what a fascinating county, by the way, like uh, geopolitically is the, probably the uh, the apt phrase. What yeah. um Fascinating county it is. Well, we may as well kick off with that. Aaron Kernan and Al McCall, you're very welcome, lads. You're both there. Lads. Gentlemen. How are things? Uh, Aaron, you're going to be the main OTB selector today. So just to, to pick up on that point that Adrian made there, could you talk us through the sporting identity of County Armagh or how complicated that question may even be? Um, it's, well, I suppose, obviously, from our own perspective here where we are in, in Cross McLean and South Armagh, obviously, Gaelic Games... Uh, would without doubt be our main sport. Um, but um, I think, as you said, see, whenever we discuss, um, we can cover all angles, uh, sporting, whether that there's uh, horse riding, soccer, rugby, um, and predominantly NGA, it'll be football. Um, so it is, uh, I'd say, probably most of South Armagh, um, it, like I said, it'll be based around your 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 GA Gaelic football. Um, Rugby wouldn't be wouldn't be huge uh, down around this region. Um, is there rugby soccer, at all down there? There's not. The nearest that we would have, and there's actually a, a club that I would have played a wee bit, would actually be the Dock, but then the Nassau is in County Louth, and then you would have Newry and Armagh City um, rugby teams. The Armagh City themselves would be going really well um, in recent years. Uh, they'd be a very well-run club, and they would actually have a lot of... Um, GA personalities, people who would be involved in, in fundraising um, and sponsorship at county board level in both Armagh and Throne would be involved in, in Armagh Rugby Club. Um, so they, they would be the biggest draw in terms of playing All-Ireland League um, local to us. Uh, Niall, what's your view on that uh, in terms of what sports lie where and how important, I guess, Gaelic Games and other sports are going to be to your selection today? Yeah, uh, I suppose uh, Arne touched on it there. South Armagh, you know, it's almost like an autonomous region. I suppose that goes back to the political sort of side of it, things too. And I suppose South Armagh almost became like a county in its own. And, and Gaelic was, without doubt, <coughs> dominated. Um, but as Arne says, there's a lot more to Armagh sport than South Armagh. And there's a lot more to Armagh than just the Gaelic. But 
when we were growing up, like I went to the Abbey in Yerry and it was just Gaelic, there was Gaelic, 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 there was no hurling, there was a wee bit of football and then Gaelic football. But I think if you go into the Abbey now, for example, you'll have your basketball, they have a rugby team, they have everything. So I suppose when I grew up, I, I had no no real options other than playing Gaelic football. That was that was pretty much it. Um, even hurling in where I live was, you had a bit in Cleavy, you had a bit in Camla with the Cree Brewer Club and it was pockets, but Gaelic football was just so dominant and I suppose it's no surprise when you when you think of South Armagh, and particularly you think of the the big Gaelic football players and the men that have and women have done so much. I, up in the the mid part of the county, the north part of the county, it's aren't touched on there. You know, that's when you sort of get into a more normal sporting arena where, you know, football and different things like this and field hockey and different things just all sort of are so prevalent. So, I, I always thought it was a unique sort of county in the split, and it does go back. It goes back to you know. The population of South Armagh, I think it's you know it's ninety percent Roman Catholic in the last census or something like that. So it sort of feeds to that, and it had such a reputation during the I suppose the dark days too. It was referred to almost as a place on its own. So we probably embraced that part of it as well, being a being this sort of region that we are proud of. And you know a lot of people from around here wouldn't say they're from Armagh, they'd say they're from South Armagh, and I suppose that just fed into the whole exclusivity of Gaelic football being the being the one key sport. Right, okay. How tied up in in your identity, like the the so from those days, like Oshin has spoken with us and has spoken plenty before about the choppers landing and the impact that that would have had on on I suppose um, your um, your sport and your identity and that kind of it, 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 has that changed then over the years, like in terms of. Uh, people's like I know Aaron, you were saying there you played a bit of rugby yourself like has that changed over the years or is it still very much your identity is tied up with your sport uh, no I definitely think it has changed in terms of um, I would say our society been a bit more open minded a bit more broad minded um, and you know the amount of people who would follow and, and enjoy rugby, um, I would say, over the past 15, 20 years has really snowballed where it just was not was never something that was on our radar. Um, mm. I, I just think from a participation point of view and, and actually spectating, Gaelic Games is still your biggest sport um, uh, within Armagh, um, without doubt, because just the, the access to clubs. Um, so like I say, in, in terms of rugby clubs within the whole county, you're talking about Lurgan Rugby Club and Armagh. Um, Newry Rugby Club would be based uh, half a Newry split, but the rugby club would be based uh, almost in Mayor Bridge. Um, you know, so it's it's not even in the county. And then obviously Dundalk is, is close to us in South Armagh, but they would play in a Leinster league. So you're talking about two rugby clubs really um, within a whole county. Um, whenever you're talking Gaelic football clubs, it's mid forties. Um, the amount that we have. So in terms of giving players access uh, to, to play in sport, uh, GA definitely is massive. Um, another one probably that we has skipped by because just Gaelic Games was really all that you could play. Mm -hmm. Triathlons uh, locally are absolutely massive now. Um, Camla Triathlon about 15 years ago was called Crooked Lake Triathlon started up um, and it probably it was always if you didn't play get a couple you didn't really have another avenue to to play or to exercise or to to get involved in anything but definitely that's one um that's one area that is huge now across the board from um from youth right through to people who probably stopped participating in sport whenever they were very young um and now they're they're big into it um and i suppose that's that's great that shows that uh we probably are um, changing a bit um, as I said here and that we're willing to learn and the options and the opportunities for people there uh, are massive and that, that's something that, that you didn't have and particularly in the times of the troubles you definitely didn't have and I think having our GAA clubs is where we all felt safe um, and felt included um, and, and I think that's just why the bond is still so strong uh, in the county. Well, let's get into some of the picks then. How this is going to work is that Aaron is going to be the official OTB selector and then Niall is going to come in and change one of Aaron's list. So he can put up whoever he wants on the mountain after Aaron's picked his four. Of course, Aaron, you can make a fantastic case for all four and we could proceed with that. Uh, who is your number one pick, Aaron Kernan? Um, well, I suppose if we, we come straight in, um, someone who's really prominent and has just finished up his sporting career uh, would have to be Rory Best. Um, to have an international captain uh, within our county, Rory's from their, their family is just outside Points Pass, um, which 
would be sort of halfway between Portadown and Newry. Um, he obviously would have played his, his underage rugby in that there in Banbridge, which is County Down. But I think where he's from, uh, we're very much going to claim him uh, as one as a, one of our own. But yeah, somebody who had a, a career with Ulster and Ireland, um, spanning back to 2005, and to play in the position that he played and the attrition and um, someone like say who dabbles slightly and who he bit a rugby standing out in the wing, keeping out of as much trouble as possible to play mm-hmm. in in a, in a front row. Um, the way he did for the length of time he did um, was remarkable. Um, you know, World Cups, Lions Tours, um, Grand Slams, Six Nations. He did it all, really, by winning a World Cup for Ireland, and he's not on his own and missing out on that. You know, our greatest ever players in O'Connell, O'Driscoll, O'Gara, these boys, uh, they never achieved any more than he did. And like you say, to the level of consistency he had and the way he carried himself, um, I think he's he's definitely he's a he's one of the the top sporting men that we've ever produced in our county. Given the complexities of identity that we've spoken about in the county, is there a pride in him in South Armagh, Aaron, or what's the relationship with uh, Rory Best? Uh, like if we're being totally honest, probably the connection genuinely wouldn't be huge because he's not someone you would ever come across because you uh, you would be, he'd be playing obviously in Belfast for Ulster, but. Um, I have to say, just in, in recent times, actually twice earlier this year, um, I was fortunate enough to be in his company at a couple of sporting functions and uh, his speaking, um, he, he spoke so well at them. Um, and then even just to meet him in person, very welcome him, very humble uh, man, um, very proud of himself and his family. Um, but one thing that I suppose you'd like to get across as well is that his older brother Simon. We have uh, an under an under ten blitz in Cross Glen every year, and um, his his uh, brother Simon's family. Uh, he has young kids, so their club, local club in Pints Pass, would be O'Hanlon's, and it was brilliant to see them. They were up here last year participating in it, and you had Simon up there uh, encouraging the children, taking part, coaching, helping out. Um, you know, so you go back 15, 20 years ago. Um, would that have happened? Probably not. Um, so just even something small like that there to see them coming up, um, coaching kids, enjoying a day out in Cross McGlen uh, was massive. And I think, again, it's another positive to show exactly where our country's going. Any arguments, Niall? Uh, absolutely not. Um, an absolute cert. Um, I think Aaron, I could be wrong, might have played a bit for Banbridge back uh, one pre-season trying to keep fit. So he might be a bit biased there. But no, Rory Best an absolute cert. He's, he's probably one of the first men on the list. And... I'm glad he mentioned Simon there as well because when I was growing up, again, like Arne, you probably wouldn't have had the connection to rugby that you would have heard. It would have been at a distance, but you would always heard about the best brothers, Rory and Simon, and Simon obviously played for Ireland as well and then had a few health issues that curtailed his career, but was another fantastic player. But, you know, Rory, four Six Nation titles, you know, a couple of Grand Slams, uh, one of the most capped players in Irish history, and, and like Arne, I wasn't on the panel alongside him, but I went to a few of those talk shows, and he's such an interesting guy. Uh, it was the first time I'd ever really heard him speak. Uh, I think I think he's about coming out next year or some stage, but he was just so so interesting to listen to. Um, I, I, it was a it was a talk show sort of half G half rugby, and I could have sat and listened to Rory Best all night. To be honest with you, uh, seemed like a real character that he'd be a stubborn in the change room and he wouldn't be afraid to say what he what he meant and I suppose you don't get the cap in your country unless you're willing to sort of make the big calls and and push your teammates and do things like that but on on the on the pitch like such a hard you know to do it for so long um those battle scars and to come away and have such a successful career just speaks volumes uh, Rory Bess is an absolute cert We'll move on to the second pick then. Rory Best is going up in the mountain. He won't be taken down, clearly. Uh, who have you got as your second pick, Aaron? Uh, well, I think another fairly obvious candidate from JA would have to be Kieran Beguini. Um His playing career, um, obviously, he joined the Ironman panel in 1990 and played right through to 2007. Um, but just, I suppose, playing ability... Um, Obviously, was it was a huge figure on the field um, as a centre half back, command and figure, um, long deliveries, you know, off uh, off the left foot. But it was probably his his leadership qualities and his sheer desire um, to to be successful and to, to have those around him successful um, that makes him stand out. Uh, 
as someone who was fortunate enough to be in a change room um, whenever he, he was captain and going so well, I, I wouldn't be one for remembering a huge amount of what people would say or um, you know how they would get motivated for games. But Geezer in the change rooms before a big championship game, it was a sight to behold because he'd nearly be in tears, you know, the passion that would be coming out of him. And the one thing that always struck me was nearly the, the side of his neck. It was nearly like scales, like the hair was standing <laughs> on the back of his neck where he he was pumped, he was ready for action. Um, and he just spoke with such ferocity and passion that it wasn't hard to get pumped up or to get motivated. Um, obviously, everyone's focused and, and driven in their own right. But as you were heading out onto the battlefield and he was giving your last words... Um, it was safe to say that everyone was tuned in and ready to go. So, um, yeah, it was it was special to be part of that Armagh change room. Um, and like I say, he was he was the main man. He was the leader, and he was the person that you didn't want to uh, have him staring at you at some stage for messing up for some reason. Could it be a situation where young members of the panel could live in fear every now and then when you had Kieran McGinney as your captain? Yeah, there's no point in telling you otherwise. <laughs> that is the case. Yeah. Um, I, at that stage, yeah, I was oh five. I was coming in. I might have been twenty, twenty one. Um, but yeah, you you didn't want to catch his a um, for not being tuned in or or not carrying your weight. Um, he he demanded the utmost of himself, um, and he expected everything else to follow suit. Um, and and to be fair, I, I think it's sort of my age group coming through. I think a lot of them did. They, they sort of they weren't too long getting on board and, and figuring out what needed to be done um, and um, it was uh, the first I suppose the first year he wouldn't have been on his own in, in that regard like uh, you just had such strong figures and personality that I think it all worked and it all knitted well McGrain was was equally as driven Jamard Myers and they gave me one of the greatest humiliations I ever had in my first night in Armagh train and just Pumbled me into the ground and tackling grids. It was it was a it was a, it was a reality. But I suppose I was used to it in having to John Tony McIntyre, Francie Value, um, doing similar to me at, at club level. So um, I just think we had a great mix at that time of obviously superb quality, um, but just strong personality, strong leaders, um, and I suppose that just speaks volumes for for Geezer and the personality he had in that he was still always seen as, as the leading figure in that regard within that group. Uh, Niall, you've also gone for Kieran McGinney here. Did journalists live in fear of Kieran McGinney, the Armagh captain, as much as his teammates did? Yes, yes, <laughs> we did. <laughs> no, the funny thing, Kieran, Kieran wouldn't be massive for media stuff, you know. He's just one of these boys, he doesn't really think that it's a necessity. Like, you know, he'll do what he has to do, but he doesn't feel that he needs to play the media or anything like that. And... I think it's quite interesting. Um, he doesn't do a lot of post-match stuff. Jim McCarry generally does the post-match. Unless Armagh lose, uh, Kieran will come out and does the media stuff generally when Armagh lose after a championship match. So that's probably just another one of his sort of qualities he feels he, he probably has to front up when things are going bad. But when he is doing press conferences, particularly pre-match, um, he is absolutely fantastic to talk to. And a, a bit like Rory Best, he could, you could just sit and listen to him all day. And people have this sort of idea of him being a dour and, and sort of robotic and all. But if you get Kieran McGinney in a good environment and listen to him chatting, he, he's fantastic. He's brilliant. And he's, he's very opinionated, very strong in those opinionated opinions. Um, again, I'm, I'm not going to argue with Arne there. He, he's, he's a cert for this, uh, for this, these four, one of these four places. Like, you know, Kieran probably... Uh, mythical status amongst Armagh fans in that run, you know, going from probably 2000 onwards um, right up to 2005, 2006 uh, I actually, I was trying to find out a few weeks ago about his trip to New Zealand um, and there's not much on it but, you know, the rumours were that he went to New Zealand if, and, you know, trained with rugby teams and all there for, uh, for a few months and you know, it was probably the first time I had heard of someone going and taking time away from everything just to train almost professionally. Um, and he just, you know, his physique and everything, he, he just looked after himself so well. Like, he came on to the Armagh team as a scrawny cornerback and turned into this centre half that you just could not move. Um, and as Arn, Arn said there, that O2 team was just laced with unbelievable characters and unbelievable talent. I watched a lot of the the big games there in lockdown and uh, it's amazing just how good Paul McGrain in particular is that maybe doesn't get the credit as being 
one of the best players to ever play for Armagh, but it seemed to just tie it all together, uh, fans, players, teammates, and even now, as manager talking to the Armagh players, nothing's changed in terms of his TikToks. You know, Arne talks about, you know, near tears and you're just running through walls. You talk to any of the current Armagh players and, and they agree to just see his team talks, his motivation is absolutely inspirational. But he'll cut you down the sides if you need it. You know, he's not a soft touch. So he just, he, I'd say he brought Armagh football to a new level just by everything he'd done. But a lot of people helped him along the way, but he was the figurehead, the right king of it. So we've got Rory Best, we've got Kieran McGinley. They're both definitely going up on the mountain Aaron, we'll stick with GEA here. Have you decided which is going to be the next GEA name to go up on the mountain? Yeah, uh, this one probably a bit more awkward for me, um, <laughs> but I'll I'll go with my father for this one. Um, I suppose I own one because uh, I got plenty of stick down three years. We wouldn't have gotten any team only he was the one who was picking me. So uh, I'll, I'll repay the faith here. Um, yeah, it's. They said that it is a tricky one for me, but um, I, I just feel that in terms of the success that we've had, particularly in, in the county over this past 20 years, um, you do need the players, um, which obviously we had at both club and county. Um, but uh, growing up in the house that we grew up in um, and, and knowing the drive, passion and vision that he had for the teams he was over, um, I, I would see myself and I know the brothers would be the same, I'm very fortunate. Um, he, he always was thinking of the biggest, bigger picture. Uh, he took over a Cross McGlenn team and, and he wasn't, he was never just thinking about winning an Armagh Club Championship. He was talking about winning Ulsters, talking about winning All Ireland's, stuff that was never done before. And to be honest with you, obviously it's quite a while ago and, and I was very young. So I didn't really appreciate the enormity of what he actually was talking about doing um, or how he was going to go about doing it. Um, but to sit back now and to, to see that um, he was involved in so many successful teams um, and, and helped so many families um, to achieve the ultimate, uh, something that I'm, I'm very proud of. I was delighted to be obviously able to play uh, under him at, at club and county level as well. Um, and like I say, in terms of the level of detail and um, the vision that he had and to be able to, to get so many people on board um, I think was was a was a special trait. Um, you know, obviously, the playing personnel. He, he always felt that he had it at cross, and he felt that he had it with Armagh. Um, but he was never afraid to to go outside to ask for advice or help or get other figures in. And he did that throughout his career. Um, and, and I can think back to to the very start. Um, I, I was speaking to Tommy yesterday, just giving him a bit of an insight. Or he was asking a bit of an insight, but uh, I can remember it was ninety six. There was a, it was a Hastings Cup. It used to be an under-21 like league before the championship started. And I, I can remember, I can't remember who Armagh were playing anyway, but um, he was going to collect the players after it because Cross McGlenn were heading to Ballincollig in Cork to play a, a gold watch tournament. Uh, and so we were heading down into Friday and it was uh, played on Saturday, Sunday, St. Patrick's weekend and coming home Sunday evening. So um, from memory, it was, I think it was Arsene McConville, Tony and John McIntyre and that that he picked up and he told the managers or his selectors going down the road and the bus with the rest of the players, there'd be no drink, we mean business, we're going down here this weekend. So I can remember I probably about 11, 12 years of age and we get into the clubhouse in Ballon College late on that Friday evening and sure the whole place was going mad. Uh, <laughs> the players were having a good time and his two selectors were having an even better time. Uh, so I can, I can just remember, he just sort of says to me and some of us just stand over it wait a second here and pulled the selectors outside and wasn't happy with what was going on, on anywhere, but there was a clear the air meeting the next morning and it was, we were down here to, to mean business. I don't care how foggy the heads are, we're here to do to do a job. So in fairness, they, they won the semi-final final. final. Uh, we're getting presented with the gold watches. Um, but at that stage, I can remember him saying that we'll not be back to defend their title next year. Uh, the all Ireland Club final was just over on TV. They're all watching the Ballon Holly uh, Club rooms. And he says, we'll not be back next year because we're going to win the all Ireland Club. Um, and at that stage, Cross hadn't even won an RMI Championship in 10 years let alone winning an all Ireland club title. But it's just the sort of thing. He was probably putting pressure on himself and he was putting pressure on the team by saying something like that there. Um, but 
I think he was letting them know how genuine he was in his vision for them. Um, and like I say, the rest is history from that regard. Aaron, we could talk to you about uh, your father for a long, a long, long time, I, I dare say, this morning. Unfortunately, we're very tight in time. Uh, Niall, I don't think we're going to get any disagreements here. I think you're going for, for Joe Kernan as well. Yeah, I'm not providing much opposition here at all. Um, I'll run through uh, three sort of candidates for this position. Uh, I'll run through the other two very quickly. Oshie McConville, I suppose, to use an American term, the ultimate clutch player for club and county, just done it all, won it all. Didn't matter how bad he was for 69 minutes, he didn't take him off the field because he had scored a winner so often. The other person I want to mention, Caroline O'Hanlon, um, just a legend of the ladies' game and you know, uh, former player of the year, a couple, three All Stars, I think Caroline possibly has, and also plays professional netball in Manchester, uh, has played for Northern Ireland, has represented Northern Ireland in three Commonwealth games, ties those two sports in with being a doctor, and I just don't know how she does it. I don't know where she finds the out. Joe, Joe, like, uh, I think people forget that Joe was such an unbelievable player for Armagh too, like a, a two-time All-Star, a three-time All-Star winner, you know, a swashbuckling midfielder on, on a really strong Armagh team that went so close to the All-Ireland glory. And it's the way things about his management, like we all know the story about the slamming the runners-up medal off the wall and things like that. But I remember hearing we things like when he was with Cross and they were playing in an Ulster Club Championship that uh, mightn't have been true or not, but that you know they got the pre they sent down heaters to to heat up the changing room and I think it's we things like that that some you wouldn't even think of until you hear that other managers have done it like you're going down to play an end of skilling or something on in November and the team are coming in and it's not a freezing changing room we things like that for me for good managers are the difference just those wee touches that just elevate teams to that other wee level couple of percent and with Armagh mm -hmm. listen there was a lot of work done you know the two Brian's to serve uh, unbelievable credit they brought Armagh to real level but it just took Joe to get them over the edge and he just brought that extra couple of percent that just got Armagh to the to the ultimate glory and for me that's the sign of a good manager who can just see a team that's been doing something and just get an extra five percent out of them just by wee changes and good tactics and good team selections and listen his honour speak for himself. He, he's done it all, and mm. Armagh were just an unbelievable team under him, an absolutely incredible team. Should have probably won a second All Ireland, but when you look back and look at the Ulster titles and the fact that they did win the All Ireland, I think it just speaks volumes about Joe's impact on Armagh. Well, the good news here is that we've got agreement on all three names. Uh, so we've got Rory Best so far, we've got Joe Kernan, and we've got Kieran McGinley. We've also got agreement on our last name. Our last name, Aaron, is Neil Lennon. Yeah, uh, Neil Lennon actually started out his uh, his career with Geezer. Uh, they played for Armagh Miners in, in 1989, um, and then obviously he switched allegiance um, to uh, to soccer across the water, and um, obviously had a hugely successful career um, at both club um, representing Northern Ireland and obviously uh, particularly in management with Celtic. Um, so uh, to be fair, like. Soccer uh, in the Lorgan area, you'd have a lot of very strong and traditional clubs uh, within GAA down there, um, but soccer would, would be huge. And I think someone like Neil, um, to be coming from a Catholic background, um, you know, and to, and to still go and to represent Northern Ireland, and I know at times it, it wouldn't have been easy on them, um, and, and there was difficulties, uh, but so many you know, Catholics across the north, um, soccer would be their number one sport and he would have been one of the leading lights, um, particularly like a lot of your, your Catholics in the north would affiliate obviously um, with Celtic and to see him um, putting himself out there to, to play for Celtic and still go and play for Northern Ireland, um, like, I think that, that takes a lot, of, a lot of bottle and a lot of leadership um, because he could have been taking flax from all, flax from all angles um, to do that there. Um, so I think it just sort of shows the strength of character um, that he had himself, uh, obviously, to go with his playing ability. So um, definitely he, he's up there with um, one of the, the, the biggest lights that you would have in soccer terms within the county. Are you happy enough to go along with that, Niall? Are you, are you going to rubber stamp the Neil Lennon selection? Yeah. Um, it's funny, I'll, I'll mention just while we're on soccer, I suppose perhaps uh, you could argue and say that the person who's had the biggest impact from our man world sport is probably someone that 99.9% .9 of people in Armagh have never heard of. Uh, a fellow, William McCrum, who, despite being a goalkeeper, invented the penalty. Um, and uh, like you just think uh, penalty shootouts and penalties in world football, just the impact they've had. And BBC did a show and Guy Lineker came and visited his grave and said, 
you have a lot to answer for, you know. But <laughs> we we wouldn't have heard. Most people haven't heard of William McCrummel. Just thought it was interesting that someone from around here has had such a big say in, I suppose, the direction of of football. But yeah, E. Lennon. Um, listen, he, he it was so difficult. It mightn't have been that long ago, but it was so difficult to be a, a Catholic playing for Northern Ireland. Re, you know, there was graffiti and different things like that. Later in his career, 2011, he got bullets in the post and different things like that. And I always admired that side of his game. Uh, you know, a boy that won a couple of league cups with Leicester and all, and what he's done with Celtic as a player and a manager, you know, that's incredible. But I always admired his strength of character and that side of thing because Northern Ireland and the North here, a lot's changed in the last 10, 15 years. But if you go back 20 years ago, it was a different place. It was a very difficult place. And if you were a Catholic playing for Northern Ireland, you were really, really standing out. And he took a lot of slack for that. Um, it wouldn't be the same now, thank God. Not not in the slightest. Everyone's moved on and it's brilliant. But that's what always stood out for me, is strength of character, taking so many blows, and he just keeps bouncing back and rubbing it in plenty of people's faces with those celebrations. Like, But... Uh, He's had such a such a great career, success wise and character wise for me. So yeah, he's my fourth pick. Very good. So for the first time, I think we've been doing twenty seven of these. <laughs> for the first time, we've actually got full agreements between the two Mount Rushmore. So it's great. We've got Rory Best, we've got Joe Kernan, we've got Kieran McGinney, and we've got Neil Lennon. The final question, Aaron, is where is this mountain going to be located? Uh, it has to be the side of Slave Gullion, doesn't it? Um, everyone coming down south or, or heading down south or coming up north you can you can see it clearly there uh, it's over nails part of the country they call it the gap of the north um, the motorway runs by it so um, no that's that's your ideal location for it you happy enough with that now i'm happy enough that's a bit of a tourism boost for drum and tea, so yeah <laughs> bring it on Again, working on it <laughs> uh, great stuff lads uh, thanks a million for taking the call so that's your arm mount rushmore otb am's mount rushmore